So what am I going to wear today? Is it going to be bear top? Bear top or bear top? Bear top. Is that with fuzzy hair or with parted hair or with brushed forward hair? It kind of all looks the same, doesn't it? Looks like a bush on top of a bear. Mm. Trousers. Trousers or no trousers? Can't, I can't really tell. So what even is 504? This isn't a standard normal game, so I don't really feel I can just do a standard normal review insofar as any of our reviews are normal anyway. No, to answer that first question, what is 504? We must begin by going back in Actually, no, we don't really have to. We can just sort of go outdoors. Better put pants on. 504 isn't actually a game. It's a framework for a whole bunch of games. And coming in this very big, heavy box are hundreds of wooden playing pieces, tokens, cards, counters, things to punch out, score charts, paper money, all of which are used in all kinds of combinations to potentially make the particular game that you may be playing that time. 504 is a concept. It's like a, a concept album. It's like a concept double album with its kind of sci-fi art cover and this feel like it's prog rock extravagance pulled out of the 70s and with everything thrown in there. It's an experiment and the, the very brief flavour text on the box, which is the only real sort of flavour there is to the whole thing, it's mostly abstract, but the very brief flavour text actually mentions it being a kind of experiment. Is it an experiment that works? You select the world that you would like to play in using this 504 Many Worlds book. Using these specially structured pages, you can flip combinations of rules and ideas together to produce something like, what's this? This is uh, 245, which is the world of restless generals on the way to the unknown, which sounds kind of interesting. All of these kind of Lego pieces click together to form a rule set. Although they're not the entire rule set, you will also have to refer back to the main manual uh, occasionally for general rules on how the top module works. Like the top module is usually the most defining one, like pick up and deliver, or in this case, race, which is any restless world is a racing world. Uh, which of these goes first? Um, you, you'll get a list here. It'll tell you which of the components that you need with the different uh, components of the, the thing. Occasionally there'll just be things like rules will will obviously clash. Then there, there might be special rules for like, uh, you don't need um, all of the, uh, some of all of the components. Phase 3D, residence. Uh, there's also um, just some, some general rules here as well. In this case, don't, don't don't play these particular cards or this 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 section always overrides that section. Phase three E, phase three H. Why is, where's phase F? The, there's a list of, there we go. The other roads, maybe I should just play with roads. Roads look like fun. And then you're ready to play. What I'm lording over here right now is what's currently voted as the best variant of 504 according to 504 players who have voted on the 504 website where you can put in star ratings for what you think are the best game. This is, this is version 738, 
which is the world of the mightiest industrialists with production needs. Stay with me here. I know you don't sound compelled by that, but I'll try and explain what's happening in this one particular world. Okay, so what I'm doing here is playing a sort of economic area control game where I'm trying to smoosh all my followers around the land like butter, spreading them out. But I'm not really interested in just being everywhere. I'm just interested in dominating certain things like having the most people in mountain areas or having the most people in wood areas or having the most people in uh, all areas, really, if I can. It's the majorities that matter and that's supported by my economy because it costs me money all the time to move these people around to settle places. But it's fine because the world's full of resources, natural resources which I can exploit with things like these little cardboard plants and these little cardboard factories and, and make things and make money back from those and uh, oh, privileges as well. The game is full of privileges. The game loves privileges, these little cards that you can buy. And I can also buy these to give myself special powers, special things that nobody else can do. And this, that's, sort of, that's sort of it. Uh, it's basically sort of area control with some some money. Uh, wait, wait. It's important to control as much territory as you can of a specific kind of thing ahead of other people because you never know when scoring will happen. It happens according to flipping over some victory point cards which you've shuffled randomly. So scoring randomly happens and you there's not quite enough room on the score track for all of the... It's fine, but it's a surprise. It's like a surprise that occasionally you get scored on what you have. Uh, and you can bid for player order. And um, you, you mostly sort of move things, or you pay to put things down and move things around a bit more. And then pay to get resources, which pays money back to you. I'm not really selling this, am I? Um, it's all right. I, to be honest, I'm not really sold on this. Uh, or d There are a lot more variants. For the first time ever, Sharp and Sit Down is actually going to stop a review. Mid-review, stop, and I'm going to go away and play some more variants of 504. So what I have here now is, I've been playing 504 for a little while now, is a setup of a completely different game that I've randomly selected from the book by combining uh, completely different modules. And it might look similar, but it's slightly different because uh, I've got some dice now and some rudimentary combat where I roll dice, so it's a bit like Risk. Okay, so what's happened is uh, I've actually just picked different modules, but they've introduced some of the same elements again, like the privilege cards that you buy that give you special powers or discounts or things. They're, 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 they're back again. They seem to be in a lot of my games. Um, and I can build plants, which make me extra money, which is useful for uh, buying more things again. But the, there's combat and there's neutral cities in this, so that's, that's different. And there's a slightly different map set up, so that's different. Okay, so here's the thing, here's the thing about 504. Obviously, I can't review 504 different games. That would be madness! But I can talk about some of the elements that individually exist in some of these games, and they sort of just endlessly recombine, and basically they, they keep turning up again and again. Occasionally you'll have a game that, that doesn't have privileged cards, or probably a game that doesn't have combat. But really, this is just a game of individual tiny little mechanics and you click them together to make something that's a bit bigger. There's combat where you can eliminate enemy units on a one-to-one -one basis. A bit like that. Or sometimes where you might roll some dice to see who defeats the other side. Oh, do you get to roll an extra dice with a privilege? And there's paper money, which you're going to have to use in pretty much every game ever. Every possible permutation and combination of modules 
whatever you play, you're always paying for something. And there's this, always this mechanic where somehow you have a regular income or you generate income because you're spending income. Again, pretty much always to put down these, is that gonna focus? Settlements, which are your way of claiming the land or just moving your, your people around or, or, or sometimes trolleys. Where are the trolleys? There are trolleys and you have to pay to move your trolleys around in some version of the games. Hang on, I'm gonna get the trolleys. Maybe you'll have some trolleys that you can drive from hex to hex and use to pick up goods and you can put those goods in your trolleys and deliver them somewhere else because that's a whole uh, potential game mechanic and you can upgrade those trolleys so you can put more things in them or they could go faster so you have faster trolleys. This goes four, it goes four, four trolley. And then there's privilege cards, which are special cards that are in so very many of the games, but not all of them, that let you do a special thing. That's very glossy. A special thing that, that you couldn't do before or just do a thing like better or cheaper. They're basically all sort of subtle modifiers that slightly modify something. And there's so many of them in the game all the time. Although whatever you get, be sure that, oops, oops, I'm so excited about privilege cards. Make sure that you can actually have them in your, your versions of the game. You need to check usually beforehand that you, you're allowed to have those cards in that game. So you better go through the whole deck and weird the ones out that you shouldn't have. Or there's roads. There's modules that add roads where you can build roads between hexes. And you could combine that with trolleys to have trolleys trundle along roads if you're into roads. And who isn't into board gaming but also roads, nobody. Or, or there, are, there are modules where you can, you can have goods. You can have goods and you sometimes you produce goods because they make you money or you want to transport goods because that makes you money or scores you points or, or, or goods. Goods are just good for both things. And there are five kinds of good in the game, the five most important kinds of good in the world, which are cow, fish, log, asteroid, and breakfast. There's even a bunch of, that's very glossy, there's even a bunch of additional boards that you may or may not ever play with, depending on whether you want to have stocks in your game and run a rudimentary stock mechanic, which you might, that might interest you, that might be interesting to you. And the, the, there's the boat, the boat is, the boat's always there. It's, well, I mean, it's never there because it's not in any of the games, but in all of my games of 504, it's, it's always there. There's always a boat because I need, I need something. Is, is sound interesting? Do any of these, these elements sound interesting to you? Because I sort of want to make 504 sound interesting because it's a really interesting idea. But at the same time, I also feel like I have stared into infinity and there was nothing to see. So it didn't really take me all that long before I started to see the commonalities here, started to see the one theme that actually runs through all of 504. And that is that, you know, a lot of the, the fundaments are basically the same. You are playing uh, a game all the time that has some sort of economic cash related mechanism underneath it and moving around hexes. And then you're sort of not really playing different games on top, but slightly modifying that game to some greater or lesser degree. And you're almost always adding in things that aren't really conflicting, don't really have any player interaction, don't really have very much randomness. You're just adding things on top of a game that already doesn't have a great deal of complexity to not actually really even make it very much more complex. Basically, what I'm saying is there isn't a huge amount in here, even though this is a game that sold on apparently having lots in it. That's the way, no, two things, two things that I started to notice were always there. The second thing, the second theme or commonality is the fact that whatever game you play, it's always a bit fiddly to set up because as well as 504 slightly different flavors of your game, there's 504 slightly different rule sets, 500 different 504 different ways for you to look at the manual and try and work out which rules don't conflict with other rules or subclauses or which of the, if you're using the cards this time, which of the cards you can't use for this variant because some of them have to be pulled out, but, but not all of them. 
And then which of the like the settings take priority because there's there's going to be a clash probably maybe but in some cases a rule look do you get do you get the idea it's just the fiddliest thing that I've actually tried to set up in a long time and the more games I played the more used I got to it of going well no this module is involved so I know I'm going to need these things but the effort I put in to prepare games and to set them up versus how long they actually took to play these really quite simple games, it's not worth it. Now, as you've probably guessed, I haven't actually played all 504 different permutations of 504. And you know what? I am never going to. I am never going to because I've seen through this thing the way I've seen through the aliens in Star Trek, where there's another alien, and what well, surprise, this one also has two arms and two legs, and speaks English, probably, or whatever the excuse is for that. But this time they're grey, and they've got a slightly different forehead, or they're played by someone from Law and Order, or Quantum Leap, or the drummer from Fleetwood Mac. What the f do? 504 retails here in Canada for about 120 Canadian dollars. It's about 100 US dollars. It's about 70 or 80 pounds in Britain, depending where you go. It's about 80 or 90 euros, depending where you look. So thank God, thank you for Gold Club donors who helped me to buy this review copy. We didn't get a review copy sent to us because I would be a sad panda if I had spent that amount of money on a board game like this. And you can see why there is so much in it, but oh my goodness. You know what, it, it's interesting and I will give it that. It's an interesting concept for a game and maybe if the execution had been done slightly differently and certainly if the manual had been presented maybe a bit, a bit differently or a bit clearer or just written a bit more transparently then uh, my enthusiasm might be higher and I've tried to be excited about 504. It may well actually represent kind of a turning point for board games or it may be the the not quite successful experiment that inspires other later successful experiments. But Shut Up and Sit Down was started to get people into board games and get them excited about board games and get more people playing board games and I don't want to recommend a game I don't want to be in a position where people come around and I say, hey, uh, I'm going to take 504 off the shelf. It's really kind of curious. Um, do you want to play this thing that doesn't quite work and is sort of an unusual experiment? I don't want to do that. I particularly don't want that to be someone's first introduction to board gaming for their first ever games night or even their second or their third or their fifth or their tenth. Now, if I want to give my players lots of different possibilities, I will break out Cosmic Encounter with its many, many aliens and ridiculous combinations of aliens, or one of the hundreds of scenarios of Memoir 44, or the random dungeons of Dungeon Quest, or anything like that. There are so many other board games out there that reinvent and rebuild themselves all the time. And you know I'm going to say this, but shut up and sit down, just can't recommend 504. I have spent too much time playing this game and honestly in the nearly five years of us doing this show in this site this is the game that i sort of found the most tiring five years i can't there's no i shouldn't be doing i there's no more there's no more time i can't other people's rules no i just why i put pants on for this oh, it's so late in the day now there's hardly any day left but there is time left there is time left for you make the most of the time and the money that you have in this life to because there's only so much of it don't waste it on 504 okay